for the first federal program on WROI Giant FM and streaming live on the first federal Facebook page. It is Friday morning. It's a beautiful Friday morning. A little chilly, but uh, still beautiful nonetheless. And it is time for the first federal program. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Moose. Yes, indeed. A beautiful day. Yes. I'm going to be uh, mostly sunny at least. So I'm Sunny okay and cool this weekend. Yeah. We've got Good Friday today and mm -hmm. Easter Sunday on Sunday. So be decent weather for an Easter egg hunt. Yes. Yes, it will. I'm... Uh, Looking forward to it. My kids don't do as much of the Easter egg hunting as they used to, but they still got some stuff coming to them. Yeah, sometimes though, Easter egg hunts is it more for the adults or more for the kids? Just to see the <laughs> or to share the candy? Yes. <laughs> you got Easter candy around the house this weekend at least? Uh, not yet. Okay, well there's still time today. My kids are sneaky and they'll find it no matter where we put it, so we wait <laughs> until last minute. Good. We welcome Tanner Lee today. He'll be on with sports. And Brian Johnson from the Fulton County uh, Community Foundation will be talking about uh, some neat program they have coming up next week. So we'll have Brian on in a little bit. Uh, also this weekend, you can plan for tax day on Monday. Yes, you can. It's the last weekend to get your taxes done to get them in on time. It usually is today, but there's a holiday in Washington that pushes it to Monday, so. It gives you a few extra days yeah. if you haven't done it yet. So, Good Friday, Easter, tax weekend. That's a lot of things going on. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. Trivia today. Okay. Baseball season started. Oh. I know you, you're a big Cleveland Guardians fan. <laughs> is it Guardian? No, it's yeah, it's Guardians. Guardians. Yeah, yeah. So, this is a common trivia question. You might have a lead on this one, I bet. Okay. Which president was the first president to throw out the first pitch in the Major League Baseball game? Grover Cleveland, maybe that's a hint there for you, William Howard Taft, William McKinley, or John F. Kennedy. Okay. I'll think about it all show. Do you know this one? I do not. Okay. I do not. It's a common trivia question if you ever do trivia events, typically, but... Okay. Well, we welcome Tanner Lee about sports today. Morning, and, and the trivia question is all Todd doing this morning, so all right. no blame on me. I stole one of this tidbit. Yes, yes it, was, it, was, it was in the script as a tidbit. As a tidbit oh. And then we decided to change course. So. Ah, okay. yeah. can I see your script? That's why I, I pulled it up. <laughs> I noticed, oh, they're right there. So I'm going to yeah. pull yeah. it up here. But yes, sports, uh, sp high school spring sports are well underway. I saw um, that uh, Rochester track team already had their senior night. Really? Yes. Not a lot of home meets on the schedule this year. Well, hey. And with spring weather, sometimes you want to make sure you get it out of the that, way. That's a good point, too, yeah. Spring weather, um, more so, especially, well, winter, everything's indoors, but more so than fall, you seem to get to the weather cancellations, postponements, yeah. make dates, et cetera. Yeah. So, but I did see Rochester baseball's off to 2 0 start. Yes. They opened the season beat number six, Delphi, and then beat uh, Plymouth, who's 4 A. So, uh, good start for Coach Corey Good and then the fellows. Yeah, absolutely. Great start. Yep. And all the other screen sports, like I said, are well underway. Uh, there's too many to list. <laughs> That's the local schools right now, but uh, uh, tune into WROI and look on the, on, the, on the Fulton County Post and also the Rochester Sentinel and, uh, and RTC, and they'll all keep you up to date. Yeah. MLB, senior guardians are off to a 4-2 start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your World uh, Series tickets yet? No. No, I did uh, happen to watch the first win of the season. For yeah. Them, so there we go. that was a fun game. So. Cubs are off to four and two starts. You got your World Series tickets yet? No, I haven't watched the game yet. I'm trying to not get invested in them this year because it can be overwhelming. Just yes. Because they're on all TV all the time. Yeah. Just, there's better things to do sometimes, you know? I, I did see their uh, new player from um, Japan blanking on his first name. Suzuki's Suzuki. his last name. He's got a six-game hitting streak going. So That's he, nice. I think he'll be the, their big merch seller this year, if I had to guess. Yeah. Jersey sales. Yeah, yeah. jersey yeah. sales. So, t-shirts, like the jerseys, I guess, too, the t-shirts. Yeah. I think the, he's an outfielder. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So, I know uh, I know some of my Cub fans or Cub fan friends are pretty uh, fired up about that. Kind of a no-name roster this year. Yeah, so it is. I don't recognize very many names. No, um, Kyle Hendricks, Jason Hayward, yeah. Wilson Contreras. That contract's got to end sometime for Jason Hayward. You would think, wouldn't it? It's been there 12 years, actually. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> long time. I mean, I, 
Remember when he came into the league as a youngster on the Braves organization? He was so. a great player for the Braves. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. And even the, the Cardinals, he yeah. was decent. The Cubs, a couple of decent years. But, yeah, that's a contract they're rating out for books. But White Sox, 4-2. and two, Cardinals are 3-2. and two, And the Reds are 2-5. and five. Wow. So, not a good start for uh, Cincinnati Reds. Reds fans. But There's a lot of Reds fans around here. There are. Yeah. There are. I don't think a lot of them were too hopeful this year. They kind of traded away a good majority of their big pieces. So, How are the Yanks doing? 4-3. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, their two starting series were Boston and Toronto. So some heavy the, hitters the division, out there. Yeah. If Vlad, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit three home runs off them the other night so for Toronto. He's a pretty good player, kind of like yeah. his dad was. So it's it's yeah. that's one thing uh, Evan Gottschalk and I were talking about yesterday. It's amazing these second generation MLB stars in the league right now. There's there's a lot of them. Yeah. And that's kind of rare to see because yeah. usually if they come up, they're not as good as their their dad, dads were. But Vlad Jr. is well on the way, and a few other of a, a few others are too. So. Well, they grew up on the diamonds. So yeah. Some of it just comes naturally. They've had the resources and grew up around, like you said. So. And one other local sports note, uh, congratulate, well, pending um, school board approval, congratulations to Joel Burris, who's going to be named the new uh, Rochester High School <laughs> Lady Zebra uh, basketball coach. Yes, yes. Yeah. So Joel's a local guy, coached at uh, Coastal Girls team over at Caston from 2014 to 16, I believe, and has been up at Trinity coaching the boys team up there in South Bend the last handful of years and done a really good job. So yep. congratulations to him. Yeah. Uh, NBA playoffs, uh, the playing games end tonight, and then the playoffs start tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. Um, no Indiana Pacers uh, this year. They actually have a, well, depending on the ping pong ball, they, they actually have a uh, good draft pick this year. Okay. For once. Single so, digit probably. Right? Yeah, it should be single digit for the first time since the 1980s. They did get Jonathan Bender back in the late 90s, but that would be a trade with Toronto, so I don't really count that. Um well, the time coming, they need to do a rebuild, so hopefully they can get some, uh, get a face of the franchise type player, because that's really mm-hmm. what they need. They haven't had one of those in a while. No, no, long time. So, uh, but Chicago Bulls are in the playoffs this year for, for some Bull. I know there's some Bull fans around the area, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. It's, NBA playoffs are always more exciting than the regular season. Yes. So yes. the effort gets amped up a little bit, in my opinion. At least the last two minutes of the game. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Got some tidbits here this morning. On this date, 1865, Abraham Lincoln passed away nine hours after being shot by John Wilkes Booth while attending the play Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater in Washington. Also on this day in 1912, the RMS Titanic sank. Mm. Might have seen the movie about that. Um, yeah. That big day in history sounds Yeah, probably. yeah. And we got two more here that are pretty big events, too. On this day, 1947, Jackie Robinson became the first African American to play in the major leagues. Yes, Jackie. baseball trivia here. What number? I don't know. The movie. There was a movie with the number. Brian Johnson flashed up some signs over there. 42. 42. Yes. Every major league player will be wearing 42 today. Yep. Yep. And uh, the last player to wear 42 every day besides Jackie Robinson was. Don't know. Mariano Rivera. From the Yankees, yeah, he was, of course, he was, he was yeah, yeah. So he, I'm still not sure how they, they let him wear it all those years, but yeah. So that 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 number retired twice by the Yankees. And on this day, in 1955, Ray Kroc opened the first McDonald's restaurant in mm-hmm. Illinois. This he was somewhat Illinois. successful. Yeah, he did pretty yeah, well. From a little bit, yeah. Went from one restaurant to. I don't even know how many now. <laughs> Big town every corner. It, it really seems that way. That, that mm-hmm. McDonald's and, and Subway, it seems like. Yeah. Almost every town and every corner anymore. I think that's actually accurate. Subway has more restaurants than McDonald's. Do they? I knew they did, yeah. yeah one Subway's time. number one, and I think McDonald's yeah. is number two. What is number three? Uh, I don't know. I don't I have to look that, that up. And that, might, that might be a trading post. We, we had that Back survey uh, once upon a time. Yeah. I forget. Okay. And we got a lot of national days today. Uh, national That Sucks Day, pardon the language. Yeah. yeah. I uh, hate that word, no comment. <laughs> national Anime Day. Okay. National ASL Day, American Sign Language Day. Mm-hmm. International Micro Volunteering Day. 
and National Take a Wild Guess Day. So that's what you're going to do in the trivia question. Yes. Right? So National Micro Volunteering. Does that mean I'll just help you a little bit, or what's that mean? It, I didn't. I, once again, I should have clicked on it and read more into it, and I didn't. But um, just, just I'm trying to even remember what the image was for that. I mean, I could go look, but then, you know, yeah. I might accidentally stumble across uh, the question. We have, we have question. on camera yeah, we'll on Facebook you. Live, so, <laughs> so. Well, thank you, Tanner. You're welcome. have a lot of upcoming events. Rochester High School is presenting Disney's Frozen Junior tonight at 6 p.m. in the high school auditorium and tomorrow at 3 and 6. Tickets are $5 for students and $8 for adults or $10 for streaming only on Sunday. Okay. Anybody know anybody involved in that or? Um, yeah, there's a few of uh, the good high schoolers. I mean, they're all good high schoolers. That's, yes. That sounds bad, but there are several different high school students, and we've had a chance to talk with a couple different of them. Oh, that's great. Here, so. Great. WROI. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, next weekend, that is next weekend, right? The 32nd annual Redbud Trail Rendezvous yes. will be held April 23rd and 24th at the Fulton County Historical Society. From 10 to 5 on the 23rd and from 10 to 4 on the 24th. It's always a good event. Always. Also, the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce will be holding its annual gala and community awards ceremony on Saturday, April 30th at the high school. Doors open at 6, dinner at 7, awards at 8.30. Individual tickets for the chamber members are $50 or $350 for a table of 6. $75 for non-members and $500 for a table of six for non-members. Tickets are on sale at the Chamber Office or contact Kelly Scoby at 224-2666. It's a good event for the Chamber coming up, recognizing local community participants and leaders. Yes, yes. Looking forward to it. So a lot going on this weekend. you got Easter weekend, you got Tax Day coming up. If you're looking for something to do, go out and check out Frozen Junior this weekend. Yeah. Flowers. Uh, the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce April Member of the Month is Fraunfelter Dental Clinic. Yes. Congratulations to them. Yeah, absolutely. Money news. You talked about the Dow being down a little bit earlier. Uh, the market's moves came as inflation still takes center stage. Yeah. In investors' minds this week, and Treasury yields climbed higher, and the two back-to-back -back U.S. inflation reports showed sharply increasing prices. I think it was 8.4% for... Oof. Oof. With that in mind, I saw this yesterday. I had to look to verify this to make sure it was true because I haven't heard anything in the news about this. Amazon said Wednesday for the first time in their history it will charge sellers a 5% fuel and inflation charge. Wow. I, I thought that would make more news than that. No, but it's just sellers, though, not exactly. buyers. But unfortunately, yeah. things like that get passed on to buyers. Yes. The fee's supposed to begin April 28th, and it's being imposed because of inflation has changed in the last few months. But that was interesting news. I, I tried to verify in multiple sources. The only one I found it on was CNN, and they're reputable, right? I think so. Okay. I think so. Also, Elon, Elon Musk offered to buy Twitter for $43 billion. I, I mean, personally, if I own Twitter, I'm going, here's your login credentials. Give me the check. Yeah. That's just me. $43 billion, a hostile takeover attempt with plans to take the company private. Yes, yes. He had a real interesting quote, and I'm not sure I really understand it very well, but I thought I'd say it today. Having public information that is maximally trusted and broadly inclusive is extremely important to the future of civilization. That's mm. why he's buying mm. Twitter, mm. to make sure civilization continues. <laughs> Okay. That's what I read from that. <laughs> he said, I don't care about economics at all, which maybe refers to like $43 billion for yeah. 140 character right. messages for people. Right. Just give us the edit button, please. Yeah. 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 So, moving on today then. Uh, First Federal Savings Bank. We're open today, 8.30 to 5, tomorrow, 8.30 to noon. You can always bank with us online with our mobile app which is free to download, or ATMs are open 24 by 7 if you need cash. You can always use an ATM in any other city. Check out the Money Pass Network. You can get a no surcharge access to your money. We offer Simply Free checking accounts and Simply Free business checking accounts. When you open a new checking account or refer a friend to an account, you get a free gift. The Bento Box, we showed that a couple weeks ago. Also, we have a couple new products going on today. 
uh, that we've introduced in the last few weeks. Roundup checking for debit card transactions. So what that is, Moose, when you use your debit card to you know, buy a Coke or something like that, mm -hmm. take the, if it's $1.29, they take the difference and round up and you can transfer that to your savings account. Oh, okay, that's awesome. It's, it's a pretty neat thing, actually. Yeah. It's a great way to save for a special occasion, like a vacation, add to your Christmas club, save for a special purchase, save for your kid's college, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Because, you know, if you just round up those pennies, you know, day in, day out, over 365 days a year, then add two years in there, that's a lot, that's a lot of money. Yes, yes. So that's a good program we've Definitely offered. If you have any questions about that, contact uh, us at the main office, and we can help you get signed up for that. So it's Roundup Checking for Debit Cards. Okay. Also, we introduced another new digital product this week with our online banking services. It's an internal transfer. It's an external transfer service that allows you to transfer funds to your account at First Federal from another bank oh, okay. digitally. So that's on our online banking. If you have any questions, contact us at the bank. We can help you walk through that. And it's a good thing if you want to help move money around to manage your finances. Yeah, absolutely. Still offering mortgage loans. Rates have gone up, but we're, uh, there's still some refinance opportunities going on to, to consolidate debt or uh, do a home improvement. Uh, even at the rates where they're at now, they're still really good rates compared yeah. to what they were years ago. Yeah. And, and it's just that cycle of the business right now. Mm -hmm. We offer commercial lending for businesses. Contact Lindy Breeden. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're the only locally owned bank in Fulton County, as Dick Felcher stated. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Borrowers must meet underwriting guidelines. We are FDIC insured and an equal housing lender. Our NMLS number is 399927. And that makes us legal. Great. We welcome our friend Brian Johnson. And uh, as Brian's getting up here, Tanner did look, Starbucks is number three in restaurants. Okay. So you got Subway, McDonald's, and no, Starbucks. McDonald's, Subway. Oh, Starbucks. it switched yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, okay. You count Starbucks as a restaurant, though? Yeah, well, there's KFC 4 and Pizza 5. No, okay. Well, we got Brian standing here. Brian's going to be hungry now. Welcome, <laughs> Brian Johnson, the Director of Development for the Fulton County Community Foundation. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for You're a good me. friend of the community in the show, and you always help us out a lot. Yeah. We, we welcome you today. I appreciate the um, invitation. You ready for Easter weekend? I think so. Good. <laughs> I hope so. Good. Uh, we're here today to talk about Bridges Out of Poverty program. Yeah. Um, Part of um, what the Community Foundation does, obviously a lot of times people know us as an organization that gives out scholarships and grants in the community, but um, part of what we do is try and support other organizations in our community as well. Um, because we realize that, that strong nonprofits um, really add so much to our community. You look around and you see what would happen if these nonprofits were not here. There's a lot of things we wouldn't have. And so um, one of the things that, that we've been working with over the past couple of years, um, we've been working with food banks, and of course there's been a lot of um, significant um, changes in our society, I will say, with COVID over the last couple of years. Um, and, and so one thing we've heard is, is organizations could use some resources. Um, and this is, this is one of those that we're bringing. So Bridges Out of Poverty is a program that really deals with the concept of generational poverty um, and how organizations that are serving folks in that situation how they can better serve people that are that are dealing with that problem um, it's it's different than situational poverty where something may have happened and, and put you in it it's a lot of times dealing with attitudes and practices um, and how we can help folks that are dealing with that be either more efficient with funds or with decisions, uh, things along those lines. And poverty is a real thing in Indiana. I mean, it is. You think you don't see it very often, but if, you know you're working with a lot of nonprofits. And I looked at the statistic last night, and the poverty percentage in Indiana is 11.9 percent. Yeah, that's pretty significant, really. It's pretty significant, and that's and that's the poverty level. But you look at folks that are over that as well, and true, and we see that all the time that they're. When you talk about inflation, things like that affect it. Um, it's 
if your income is fixed and your yeah. resources are scarce and prices yeah. are going up, you're getting by, but barely, mm -hmm. and and with a lot of help. So it's it's one of those things that you know, if if we can change mentalities and help organizations that are serving folks change their mentalities, I, I I keep going back to the Habitat for Humanity model, the concept of helping somebody work their way out of a situation. It doesn't happen overnight, but it is possible. So that's really what this program focuses on. It's, it's kind of interesting when you start thinking about it. It's A lot of times it's a mentality. Um, I know your question of the day is related to food, and we've already talked about food restaurants. So one of the, one of the conversations that they talk about um, through this workshop is our understanding of a question. A lot of times it's based on your background. So if you ask somebody that may be dealing with poverty or maybe middle class or maybe in an upper class, um, the question of how was the food, that simple question can mean something different to everybody that hears that. If I ask somebody that's dealing with poverty, how was the food, their first response is probably going to be based off of I had enough to eat or I didn't have enough to eat. So it was good or it was bad based on how much I had to eat. Somebody in middle class, if I ask that question, they're going to assume that they had enough to eat. Probably their response is going to be based on how did that food taste. They're going to assume that I had enough to eat. Now that question really is, was it any good? Um, somebody that may be an upper class would be assuming that I had enough to eat, it tasted good. That question may really mean, how was the appearance? Did it look nice? Was it appealing all around? Um, so just those simple questions, and if, if you don't know what the question really means to somebody, it's very difficult to serve them. So you, you think about the concept of, okay, I understand where you're coming from. Now I know when you say, well, it was okay, that means that I didn't quite have enough to eat, not that it didn't taste good. So, so this program is to help open our minds and how we think about poverty a little bit yes, differently. Yeah, and, and really the concept of of helping people understand where they are and how to work out of that situation. Um, and generational poverty really is a mindset. It's understanding, I, I interpret things by what I understand, by experiences I've had. So if I can help somebody understand a little bit more, it may change their future experiences in a positive way. So there's information about this on the North Central Indiana Community Foundation yeah. website. And yeah. And this is a program you're bringing in, really, a nationally known speaker. Yes, yeah. Um, actually, Terry Dresser-Smith is one of the co-authors of the book Bridges Out of Poverty. Um, this is done based on based on a lot of research um, that her and the other co-authors, and, and Dr. Ruby Payne is the, the author of the book, um, and have dealt with this and worked in organizations and, and experienced it themselves. Um, so they're trying to pass this on and, and help others. Um, we're really excited to be able to offer this. Um, the program is going to be, um, we actually have two programs involved with this. We've talked about Bridges Out of Poverty, but we also have a poverty simulation. Um, so that on April 26th, um, from 2 to 5, we're going to have a poverty simulation so folks can come out, kind of experience that real life experience. Um, I've not been through a poverty simulation, so I'm looking forward to it. I've been on the other side with the reality store that the middle school does. Um, it's kind of interesting being on the other side of the table. I'm looking forward to being on the other side of the table that I've not experienced um, and kind of getting a feel for that. And then on the 27th, um, starting from 8.30 to 3.30 p.m., um, we'll be having the Bridges Out of Poverty Workshop. Both of those will be at the Fulton County Historical Society. So for the pos poverty simulation on the April 26th, is there any fee to that? There is not. How would somebody that, learn that more is, about that? That is free. Um, the simulation on the 26th is free. Um, the workshop on the 27th um, will cost $20. Um, and that also includes lunch. It's great. Yeah, um, includes lunch. It includes lunch, so you can't beat that. We'll have lunch on site during the program. Um, but we do have a registration page on our website, nicf.org. Um, you can click on that and let us know if you can come to one day or both days. Um, either way, 
it's a good experience to have both of those, but each of these programs can also stand on its own. So if you only have time to attend one, that's totally fine as well. So, but we do have registration deadline. Um, we're asking that folks are registered by next Monday, um, the 18th. Um, if you have any questions or, or comments, um, we'd be more than happy to help you through that process as well. So I looked at the goals on the website, the bullet points. Participants will create a mental model of poverty, uh, review the power, poverty research, examination of theory of change. So there's just information to get a foundation of understanding what generational poverty is. Yeah. And hopefully some solutions of how we can help with that. Yes, and it's, it's a pretty eye-opening experience. I mean, I didn't grow up in poverty. I grew up in the middle class. I had what I needed didn't have the extras but that was fine um, and but to experience it and to understand in order to serve somebody you have to understand a lot of times where they're coming from being able to understand why they made a decision and how to help them make future decisions so I think that's really what the core of this when, when you talk about that review poverty research and examine a theory of change that's really what we're trying to do here is is being able to help people more effectively that are dealing with this situation. And it's, it's really an eye-opening program um, for a lot of organizations. Even how we talk about how do we, how do we better serve folks. Maybe there are things that our organizations that are doing that could be done better or differently, or maybe we're, maybe it's encouraging and doing things even on a larger scale than what we've been doing. We've got a, a lot of great nonprofits that are already serving folks. We want to help support that in the future. So, is there a target audience for this program of who we would like to invite? And make yes, sure we really, really, these programs are designed for organizations and volunteers that are working with folks um, that are experiencing generational poverty. So, so we think about a lot of our organizations that help with some basic needs: food pantries, um, health care. Um, education I'm, I'm mentioning organizations that already have representatives planning to attend but, okay. but those organizations that that may be serving folks that are experiencing um, poverty um, that's that's our target audience for this does if one was a general citizen not involved with those or we'd be more than happy to have, happy have, have you come because it's it really is a, it's I say beyond just the the educational value it's a good life experience to kind of think about some of these things and think about how different people experience the same circumstances differently. Well, I heard someone say sometimes that change comes from knowledge. Yes. And this is a great way to get some yes. additional knowledge about something that yes. you know, maybe we don't think about that very yeah. much. But yeah. So again, this program is April 26th and April 27th at the Historical Society. The Bridges Out of Poverty program. Yep. Special guest speaker coming in. Yes. The foundations work with the Lilly Endowment to yes. fund this. Yeah, we'll say thank you to Lilly Endowment. This was part of our, our Gift 7 implementation grant um, to provide some education and resources to area organizations. So, um, big thank you to Lilly Endowment for helping us uh, fund this program. So, to learn more, look at ncif.org, right? Yep. And the phone number of the foundation if you want to ask a question or two? Well, you can give us a call, 574-224-3223, um, um, or if folks have email, um, Fulton at NICF.org. And registration is still open right still now? Still open. Um, we're asking for folks to register by Monday the 18th, which is next Monday, um, just so that we can make sure we have space and food for everybody. Well, great, Brian. Uh, anything else you want to add about the program? You know, I think I've been through this a couple times, and, and every time I go through it, I hear something more, or learn something more. I think it's just, it's a really good experience to kind of understand where people are coming from and, and why decisions are made. So I, I'd encourage folks, if you, if you volunteer or are involved with an organization, um, to check this out and join us if possible. Right, so it starts with a poverty simulation, yep. and then there's presentations the next day where yes. you can kind of put all that knowledge to learn yep. and hopefully put it to use. Yes, we'll talk about why you made some bad decisions the day before. <laughs> it's just a simulation. <laughs> just a simulation. Just yeah. a simulation. Yes. So thank you, Brian. We appreciate Thanks your for having me. time today and good luck with the uh, Bridges Out of Poverty program and hope we get great community participation because yes. that's how change can happen. Yes.
It is. I like it. Moose, trivia right. question. Baseball season has started. Which president was the first president to throw out the first pitch in a Major League Baseball game? Cleveland, Taft, McKinley, or Kennedy? You know, <coughs> I had no clue, so I literally did eeny, meeny, miny, mo during the show, and I'm going to go with B. William Howard Taft, the correct answer. Really? Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Trying to throw you a curve with the Cleveland thing. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Cleveland, I like Cleveland. Yeah, well... You know. On this day in 1910, William Howard Taft became the first president to throw out the first pitch at a baseball game. Hmm. Tanner's back there shaking his head like, how, how does he do this? Uh, it literally, I had four fingers to an eeny, meeny, miny, miny, miny. So <laughs> it, it was Whatever pure works. luck. Whatever pure works. luck. So thank you for listening today. We'll close with words of wisdom from Alfred Whitney Griswold, an American educator. The only sure weapon against bad ideas is better ideas. I like those words of wisdom. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Moose. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.